Hello class, this is Mr. Harp, and in this podcast we want to talk about the next part of the projectiles unit, and that is angled projectiles. Okay. Now up to this point we've talked about projectiles getting shot off a cliff horizontally, but that's not a very common usage of projectiles. Okay. I don't know you, but I've never shot a cannon directly off a cliff. Sounds like fun, but uh, not very practical. Okay. So we want to look at angled projectiles. These are, this is things like throwing a football, you know, kicking a soccer ball. Um, just more commonplace things that we see in real life, okay? And when we do angled projectiles, we can treat it similar to what we did with the horizontal projectiles, okay? And that is we can treat each component of the projectile motion separately, okay? So as seen in the previous lesson, the vertical and horizontal components have separate motions, okay? We can think about them different mathematically and physically, okay? And just like last time, the horizontal velocity remains constant, assuming there's no air friction, and the vertical velocity is the one that changes because of gravity. Okay? So for example, if we have a projectile shooting up okay, into the air, okay, we can trace its vertical and horizontal components. Okay? Notice that the horizontal velocity stays the same throughout the entire motion. Okay? It's just moving at constant velocity in that direction. Okay? However, the vertical component, vertical component goes up and its velocity keeps accelerating downward because of gravity. That's what gives it that parabolic shape. Okay? So we'll find that this is very similar to the horizontal projectiles, but we need to be able to think about it a little bit differently because we have this uh, coming up motion and going back down. Okay? Let me pull up a simulation that kind of shows one of the problems we're going to have when we're analyzing angled projectiles. So here's the FET simulation from the University of Colorado Boulder and it's going to show us one of the problems we have with angled projectiles because in our last situation let's say we have a certain speed okay, and a certain velocity okay. we're going to shoot out a projectile and it's going to have a certain motion. In our previous problems that's all we needed to define the motion. Okay. But however, when we have angled projectiles, we're going to have kind of a problem because even though we're shooting out at the same velocity in each scenario, okay, we have different projectile motions because of the angle. Okay? So we get this kind of new problem we have to deal with because we have different angles of motion. Okay? And it's not always consistent that you have a farther distance for a larger angle because I could, you know, go really short like this, okay, and I can't get nearly as far as if I, you know, shot over here, okay. That goes a further distance than that, but if I go too high, okay, then I don't go anywhere, okay, I even go backwards. And so you see that the angle is going to be very uh, dependent on what, um, motion we get. okay, And that is our trouble. So we have to figure out a way to deal with this angle. So in order to do that we have to think about the angle components of the velocity. okay. So we can consider it this way. Because the angle of the launches changes the overall motion we need to find the components of the launch velocity. We do this using basic trigonometry. okay. So if we have some angle that the cannon is launching at or the projectile is launching at, okay, before we just needed to know the velocity. But because we have the angle, now we need two different components, the y velocity and the x velocity. Okay? So you'll see them abbreviated this way, v naught x and v naught y, or basically initial velocity in the y direction and initial velocity in the x direction. Okay? v naught, or just total velocity, isn't helpful to us unless we just unless we can break it down into these components. Okay? So if you remember from basic tri trigonometry, if you want to find this side and you know this component and this angle, then you're going to need to use the sine to get that. And for this one, you're going to need to use the cosine. So we get these two basic formulas. Okay? So the velocity initial in the x direction is equal to the initial velocity total times the cosine of that angle and the initial velocity in the y direction is equal to the velocity initial total times the sine of that angle. Okay? So before we do any problem in angle projectiles, that's the first thing we're going to do is just find the velocity components. Okay? Don't just take the total velocity, find the velocity components first. Okay? All right. Once you've done that, then we can start thinking about the rest of the problem. 
So here are the kind of the basic steps I like to take when I solve an angle projectile problem. Okay. So first things first, just find the components of the velocity, write them down. Okay. You're usually just given a total velocity, so you need to find um, the component parts. Okay. Second, solve for time in the vertical equation at ground level, usually y equals zero. We'll look at that in a second. Okay. It's a quadratic problem, so you're going to get two answers. So you just need to take the reasonable answer from the two solutions. Okay. If you get like a negative answer, for example, that's probably not right. Okay, for time. And then last of all, you plug that time into the horizontal equation to solve for the distance traveled. Okay. So it's kind of similar to what we've done before with the horizontal projectiles, but there's kind of some extra steps. The first one being you gotta find the components first. And then the second thing is this vertical equation at ground level changes a little bit. Okay. So if we look at our equations before we had x equals vt, so that stays the same from the horizontal launches. But now for the angle launches, this is the equation we need to consider for um, the vertical component. Okay? So basically, y equals v naught t plus 1 half gt squared. So we have this extra um, vertical component to deal with because now we're launching in the vertical direction. Before, we only had a horizontal velocity, so now we have to deal with the vertical velocity as well. Okay? And just to be consistent, this vt really is v naught x, okay? And this is really v naught y, okay? Because you're only considering the x velocity and only considering the y velocity in their uh, respective equations, okay? All right, so that's a lot of stuff, <laughs> okay? Um, let's try a problem, and I think it will start to be clear what we need to do. So, for example, let's try this problem. Okay, so a cannon fires a cannonball 36 meters per second downrange when set at an angle of 50 degrees. Okay, how long is the cannonball in the air? Okay, so we have this cannon. It's launching out the cannon at 36 meters per second at this 50 degree angle. Okay, so if we're trying to solve the problem, let's go back to the steps for a second. Okay, so find the components of the velocity. First things first, let's find those components. So we got V naught is 36 meters per second squared. So we know that v naught x is 36 meters per second times the cosine of 50, okay? And that will give us, when we pull out our calculator, 23.14 meters per second, okay? And then v naught y is 36 times sine of 50, and that will give us 27.58 meters per second. Okay. So basically, at this launch angle, this component right here, oops, that's not very straight. This component right here is 27.58 meters per second. Okay. And this component down here is 23.14 meters per second. Okay? And there we go. So that's our respective velocity components. Okay? So we'll just keep that kind of in the back of our mind. Okay? I'm going to erase this to free up space now. Okay? Those are our respective velocities. Okay? Let's go back to the previous slide. So now next step, solve for time in the vertical equation at ground level, okay, usually y equals zero. Okay, so if you if the cannonball or the projectile is landing in the same level, not off a cliff or anything, then we use y equals zero. Okay. So going back to this, okay, those are our velocities. So we'll use our equation y equals v naught t plus one half g t squared. Okay. In this case, we know y equals zero because it's landing back on the same level ground. Um, we know v naught is 27.58 in the vertical direction times t. One half g is 4.9, so plus 4.9 t squared. Okay. Now, if we do a little bit of algebra, we realize hey, there's t's on this side. Okay. And there's no constant, so we can actually pull out a t. 
So we can rewrite this as 0 equals t times 27.58 plus 4.9 t, like that. You can think about if you distribute, then it will go back and it will become this equation above. So now we've got two solutions. One solution is t equals 0. Okay. The other solution is whatever this is right here. Okay. So if you remember going back again, go back to this, right? We got to take the reasonable answer from the two solutions. Okay, so time equals zero doesn't make any sense. Okay, that just means Cannonball hasn't launched yet. Okay, so we got to answer, find the other answer of the two. So we're going to go back. Okay, so we want to solve this guy right here on this side. Okay, because t equals zero isn't a very good solution. Okay, and you probably have noticed already want to save quite a bit of space. These problems take a little bit of writing space. Okay, but now we got zero. We can get rid of that t because we know that isn't one of the solutions, right, from the mul multiplicative factors, right? So we'll look at making this inside part zero. So 27.58 plus 4.9t. Okay. And then... Sorry, this is taking up so much room. But we minus that to the other side. Okay. So we get negative 27.58. Okay. And I just realized this is supposed to be minus 4.9. Uh, so we should get negative 27.58 equals negative 4.9t. Because gravity goes down and this goes up. So uh, make sure if and these problems that we use gravity is its negative version, okay? And then last of all, divide by 4.9, so we get negative 27.58 over negative 4.9 equals t, okay? So um, the negatives should cancel out. Um, if the velocity is going up and we treat that as positive, then gravity should be negative and treat that as being negative, okay? So now that works out, okay? So we just got to put that in our calculator, and that is the time. Okay, so 27.58 divided by 4.9. And that gives us that the total time that is in the air, just clear this, is 5.63 seconds. Okay? All right, there we go. <laughs> a lot of work, okay, but we finally got it. So we just take that equation, kind of factor out that t, and then solve for t equals 0, and that gives us our time. Okay, so 5.63 seconds. Okay? All right, let's look at the next part of the problem. Okay? So the next part says, how far away does the cannonball land from the cannon? So this is usually the next part of the question. To solve this, we need to plug in that time we just had. All right, so here's the information we had before. And like the problem said, or the last step is to plug t in for the horizontal component. Okay, so the equation is just x equals v times t. Okay, keep in mind that v is the horizontal velocity. Okay, so in this case, it's 23.14 times the t we just found, which is 5.63. Okay, times that out on your calculator, 23.14 times 5.63, okay, and you get that the cannonball went a total distance of 130 and 28 meters, okay, and there you go, that's our distance downrange, so that cannonball is in the air for 5.63 seconds, it has a total distance traveled from start to finish, of 130 meters. Okay, that's a pretty good launch. So, anyways, but there you go. That's how we solve these types of problems. Okay, that's generally the form you'll see them in. Let's do one more example and think about one more thing that will help us answer a lot of questions with projectiles. Okay, so we have a fortunate um, phenomenon that occurs in these types of problems, and that is that projectiles are very symmetric okay the the trajectories of projectiles are very symmetric 
So when we launch something, okay, and there's no air resistance, there's a lot of things we can figure out just by symmetry. Okay, so for example, a lot of people ask, well, how fast is that cannonball going to hit the ground? Okay, well, the nice thing is it's a symmetric launch if there's no air resistance. So the velocity that it comes out of the cannon will also be the total velocity that it hits the ground with. Okay, which is pretty nice. Okay, so if we know what launch velocity it had, we also know what final velocity it has. Okay, that's going to be very uh, useful. And that's true for the entire motion. Every single, you know, instantaneous velocity is symmetric. It's just opposite direction, okay, throughout the trajectory. So at this point in time, compared to this point of time on opposite sides of the projectile, it's the same velocity, just one's going up, one's going down, okay? Um, another useful property that we'll use a lot is that the y velocity is zero at the very top of the projectile, okay? If you've ever done anything with calculus, you know that's a very useful thing to know. Um, and also, this is going to be a big one. The time that it reaches the top of the trajectory is also half the time of the total trajectory, okay? So if we know what time it hits the ground, we know that the time that it gets up to the top of the trajectory is half of that, okay? Let's look at a problem where we can use that to our advantage, okay? So same situation, okay, a cannon fires a cannonball 36 meters per second downrange, and so on and so forth. But how high does the cannonball go, okay? So let's pull up the information that we know from last time. So this is what we've already determined, okay? So what we know is if we're trying to figure out how high the cannonball goes, okay, we can use the symmetry argument, right? So if this is the projectile trajectory, right, we know this highest point right here, okay, is at half the time, okay, that the total trajectory took, okay? So all we have to do is divide that in half, okay? So what I usually write, I write it like this. Um, you don't have to do the same thing, but I usually write it like this, T one half, like that, as a subscript, okay? So basically half the time, or the time at half the trajectory, equals whatever 5.63 is, divided by two. So let's do that really quick. 5.63 divided by two, okay? And that gives us 2.8, okay? Do 2.82, give us one more digit. Okay, 2.82 seconds. And then we can just plug it into that y equation. So y equals v naught t, and I'm going to write it this way, t one half, okay, plus one half g t one half squared, okay. And then we just plug in because we know every single one of these, okay. So y equals v naught in the y direction was 27.58. Okay, t naught one half was 2.82, okay, plus, and again, I'm going to make sure we use the negative g, in this case, minus 4.9, okay, that's half g, and then t half squared, so 2.82 squared, okay, so 27.58 times 2.82 minus 4.9 times 2.82 squared, okay, we plug that all in, but you should get, when all is said and done, that the total height it gets in the air is 38.81 meters. Okay? So at the very top of that trajectory, okay, it's at 38.81 meters. Okay? And that's really cool. That's really cool that we can determine that. Um, it's amazing how much we can figure out um, just from simple mathematics okay I know there's a lot of steps to that hopefully that all makes sense as you go through but just make sure you do the homework and let me know if you have any questions thank you for watching